Unfortunately, I need to switch to English <laughs> because my crease is a little bit rusty. Um, as you already know, once again, my name is Alexander Schmidt. I'm the head of software development at Hemmersbach. And the topic is how to promote innovation in the software development process. To give it a start and to have a context what we're talking about, I would like to have a few words on Hammersbach and what we are doing and who we are. As you can see, Hammersbach provides IT services globally. And when we are talking about IT service, we're not talking about uh, consulting services or doing custom software development. No, nope. we repair hardware. And we do not only repair, we also do maintain. We do update, install, configure, move, and replace hardware. To keep it simple, we do everything what is necessary to keep hardware up and running. And this we do in our repair center around the world, as well as on-site at the end customer site. And uh, the range of devices we are supporting it, it is huge. It starts from a small office printer, and it goes up to uh, clustered Superdome installations somewhere in high security data center all around the world. Our customer, to make it short, are all the big hardware manufacturer, as well as uh, some global IT outsourcer, like um, IBM, HP, Lenovo, Fujitsu, Dell, but also HCL, Accenture, Wipro. And we do deliver our service in around 190 countries. Meanwhile, more than 190 countries. And by end of 2018, we will be around 3,500 permanent employees, um, divided to 39 subsidiaries. And we are also supported by nearly 1,000 Hemmersbach authorized partners. We are growing like hell, but healthy. And um, that's why we are also one of the fastest growing companies in Europe. In the category technology, we are already in top 10. And this, of course, is the reason why we are here today. We do deliver our service already in Greece since a few years. And what we now not try to do, we will do it we will ramp up software development, also increase. To now build a bridge between Hemmersbach and the topic of today, innovation, I picked a very good example about what we did in the recent past. You need to know that for service delivery in general, there was no industry-wide standard defined. So the idea was to define a theory, development, develop a theory, which will make sure that delivery will, also, will always have the same quality. There should be cost improvement, of course. And we want to have perfect service. And that's why we founded the SDC. And the SDC, in the end, is the transformation, the translation from an idea to software, to a product. And this is exactly what innovation is all about.
So first of all, let's define what is innovation. Innovation is the result of an idea when it is translated to a new product, to a new service, also to a new process. From a software development perspective, things are a little bit different because it doesn't necessarily have to be a new product or process or whatever. It is also true for software that an innovation can be a major change in something, in existing code, which then offers new functionality, groundbreaking improvement to a process, as well as perhaps opportunities for the company to enter new markets, to provide new services. And this is how innovation is defined for us, at least. I completely forgot to tell you that um, all this is not an academical approach. <laughs> so all I will inform you or uh, the facts I will give you in the next slides is this all works for us. So um, to give it a start, let me use a paradigm. As you can see, all those big players which they are now, they started very small. Let me pick Spotify. And there were two guys and they had a very simple idea. They wanted to make all the music in the world available to everybody. And initially the service should be ad-based. <laughs> Google, Larry and Sergey, they just simply wanted the idea was to download the internet and organize the information and make it available for everybody. WhatsApp, very cool. The two guys, they just wanted to send messages to their friends using an app. YouTube, Facebook. Mark wanted to have, okay, initially it was a hot or not hot page, but when the others joined, they wanted to create a web page which helps to connect people. So they all have something in common. Because they started with a very, very small team. Only two to five players only. And they had perfect environment, perfect conditions. Because nobody told them, uh, you can't use this framework because it's not in our technology stack. Or, you can't use this library because it's alpha version, whatever. They just they wanted to use. And can you still hear me? Yes. They also had no limitations in general. They did whatever they wanted to do. They also did not take care about working hours or, or whatever. And they were absolutely focused. They had this one idea, and they just did it. So the idea is, or the approach we took is, that we use these findings and make it available for software development in general. And this is what we did. In Hammersbach, we decided that we only have five developers in one team. And those developers should be fixed in the team. Because we overcome the, the team finding phase again. You know, if you exchange team members from one team to the other and do it all the time, there is also always this team finding phase. And by fixing the teams, we will overcome this. The teams also don't have a dedicated task or assignment, meaning, um, sorry, the teams will not be fixed on one piece of code, let's say. Because if you do so, you will have specialists in this regard for only this piece of code or for this feature or for this feature set. But 
there will not be any innovation anymore because the developer, they know exactly what they did and they will do it the same way again and again. It's very fast, no doubt about that, but you will lose the second view, the third view. You will not improve the code because it's working. Why should we do, do it different? And that's why we said we don't have a dedicated assignment. And the teams should be composed to match the whole technology stack. Um, there is always a full stack developer, there is back-end developer, there is a front-end developer, and there is one experienced full stack developer who also takes over organizational stuff. Yeah? You need one guy to do a little bit organization in the team. To be honest, we realized meanwhile that having the complete technology range in one team is impossible. I will show you later on uh, one slide with all the technologies or a lot of technologies we are using and you will then understand that this is not possible anymore. But there should be a good mixture. Do you remember what I said about the environment Google had, Larry and Sergey? They had not to deal with any hierarchies. And this is what we do at Hammersbach also. In general, at Hammersbach, there is a very, very flat hierarchy structure. And in software development, especially, we, we, we got rid of all those categorization things. There are no juniors, there are no regulars, there are no seniors anymore. Everybody is just a software developer. And important and valuable team member. Of course, the experienced, experienced ones will support the juniors and so on, but this has nothing to do with categorization. Everybody's just software developer and valued. Politics is simply prevents from focusing on the idea, on the one thing you should do. We don't care about there is always this example um, I'm using. It's like <laughs> we love to code. We don't care if we are elected for the department of the year or whatever. Yeah, about politics. Next thing is it's not about hours spent in office. It's about the result. And I don't know Mark uh, personally, Mark Zuckerberg personally, but uh, I'm sure he will not have started at five. Uh, it's five o'clock. Yeah? And that's why we use a model, it's called the trusted working hours, um, which is working for us. There might be for sure others. But innovation from eight to five, it's not working. This does not mean we do overtime all the, all the time. It's just you can move your hours as it makes sense. And then the most important part is that if the company, if the management don't have openness to experiment and fail, the developer will start to do, to go the safe way, to always take the safe way. Because it worked once, it worked twice, so they will not try to do anything else. They will use the same technology, the same snippets, whatever. The feature will be there, but innovation for sure not. Then there are some hard facts. There are a lot of, uh, uh, the uh, soft facts, sorry. There are a lot of, and uh, I don't want to go too deep into detail, but um, it's a nice story. I, 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 recently read an article about innovation in general, and um, this guy really uh, argued that a stylish, modern, completely designed workplace is the number one driver for innovation. Um, sorry, it's nonsense. Um, I'm sure you all know that, especially the workplace of a software developer, of a coder, is looking somehow different, a little bit individual. Yeah? So, the idea is just to let them style and design their workplaces as they want to. 
so that th they feel well and they love to work on this place at this place. And this is a yeah. Meeting rooms are killer, and um, the base for this fact is. Uh, let me ask you a question. Did you ever have had a, a really groundbreaking idea in a meeting room? Yeah. Not talking about a solution for, for an issue or something. Yeah. Talking about a real good idea. Never. I never had any, of, any idea. I had ideas, but <laughs> now groundbreaking yeah, in a meeting room. And that's why I say meeting rooms are killer. Meeting rooms are cool if you already know what you want to do. If you, if you need space to tighten up things, to, to do draft and discuss things. But in the end, putting 10 guys in a room and say, let's be innovative, it doesn't work. Kitchen, by the way, is always a good place. Or having a beer in the evening is also very good. Um, yeah, there is no need to talk about uh, that developer love technology and modern hardware, so of course we should provide state-of-the-art hardware. And there is also this thing like one guy requested a fifth monitor, and it was like, <laughs> why do you need five monitors? Yeah, it's, 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 it's bullshit. But we approved it because if he does better code with the fifth monitor, okay, I'm fine with it. Technology. If you're always using the same technology, there will not be any innovation. And that's why I say technology needs to offer room for innovation. And you need to have a very wide range of technology available. And also, if there is a new technology popping up, there needs to be a possibility to bring it into play at any time. And as I mentioned before, I will have you a look at our technology range. Sorry. This is what we are using at Hammersbach currently. It's not a full list. But perhaps now you're understanding also why we can't have the complete technology range in one team of four guys. But what also is very important is that in times of Kubernetes, microservices, horizontal scaling, all those technologies, you for sure know that the complexity moves from application more and more to environment. In simple words, you can solve things with environment technology, which you had to code months, years before. And that's why we also decided that we don't have a hard cut between application and environment. The developer needs the possibility to play with new technology, because there's always a chance solving issues or even doing things which were not possible before this dedicated special technology showed up. And if you do a hard cut, the developer will not know that. And that's why we said no hard cut. And by the way, there is no need to mention that it's fun to play with new technology. Last point on my list is the freedom to choose the preferred tools in IDE. There are currently companies out there who really define a company-wide tool set and an IDE which has to be used by all developers. Doesn't make sense. It's not about the tool, it's about the code produced by the tool. So every developer should just use the tool and IDE which he is used to and which he can used to provide good code. Oh. Okay. 
Oh, is, is it very bad if I go in overtime? <laughs> no? Because my 20 minutes are over, but I will go on. <laughs> so, one thing which is true. Since I started professional software development 25 years ago, once there are too many layers involved discussing thing, things, drafting things already. Before it's handed over to software development, there will not be innovation. Because you will lose important information on the way to software development. Things get blurred, watered. Yeah? And if you're working with distributed, multi-language team, as we do in Hammersbach, uh, things are even worse. And that's why we decided to go with a model which only has three players. The first one is the feature round. The feature round is an institution which just decides, decides if an idea will be realized or not. That's all. Very, very high level. Of course, there is some business value analysis, but we also give ideas a chance where the use case, the, the business model, is, is yet, not yet clear. The next player is the architecture round. It's an historically grown name. The architecture round will not define a final architecture and define boundaries the software developer needs to um, deal with. No, it's just about thinking the idea through and perhaps have a solution or a an, an draft about the architecture around would do it. Because in the end, they just should provide thought invoking impulses to the development team. And then there is the development team, and they just do it. Of course, we need supporter. We have a process owner, the MC, we call him. Uh, he is the single point of contact for the development team. If there is anything needed, if clarification needed, whatever. Business specialist, who is the one to clarify all things related to how is this done in real life? Yeah? How do operation use this feature, perhaps, if there is something existing in this direction? Of course, we have tester, we need DevOps, we need GitOps, we need UI, UX design teams. The complete supporter list. One quick view on our process flow. You need to know that ideas at Hammersbach can um, be raised by everybody. It can be a user, it can be the feature around the software developer team itself, the architecture around, everybody can raise or can bring in ideas. And feature around, architecture around, I already um, talked about. Then there will be a meeting which we call the presentation where the architecture round and the team meets. And they are just discussing things. They are just discussing the idea and what can be done and as it is the job of the architecture round, provide thought provoking impulses. And then the team, they will lock themselves up, the development team lock themselves up for two days and restrict it, we fixed it by two days because we realized that even if you allow two weeks or two months, there will always be changes after this period of time. And that's why we said two days and because we Hammersbach, then do it, at least in a prototype version. I need to hurry up a little bit. So after two days, we have a breakdown review. Of course, we need one to discuss with the development team what was the outcome, what is the draft. We have then an implementation. If you want to compare it with, with Scrum, it's the sprint, of course. It's one week sprint. And this we do without any further grooming, planning, meeting, whatever. The only thing we do is we meet once a week just to clarify is everything, is the ship steering in the right direction? 
Is everything cool? Do you need something? And then we do a review if we want to have it with Scrum, um, where everybody can join and can see what is at least the prototype and the realization of this idea. Last thing, to summarize the process requirements, you need, of course, a team that thinks outside the box. If you only have technology-focused coder, there will not be innovation because they need to know the process and also the business knowledge in the team. <coughs> no predefined time spans, never stop a discussion. As long as there is no I'm right, I'm right situation, there might be always an idea at the end of a good discussion. No unnecessary meetings, I already told you. And in order to come to an end, very important, and not only for innovation promoted software development, common sense, logical, simple thinking, this is what helps immensely in all areas. I'm sorry, I'm five minutes in overtime. <laughs> um, there is no time left to answer your questions or to discuss things, but I, I really love to. Um, suggestion is jump over to our Hammersbach exhibition stand. You will find me there and um, we will for sure discuss things if you want to until the doors are closed. Thank you very much.